for the longest period of time, General Aviation had its lead manufacturers, the folks that had shown their ability to have staying power and be a part of the community for the foreseeable future. Uh, in the LSA segment, there are a couple of companies that are emerging as those that are becoming the pivotal companies. And obviously, uh, you are one of them and uh, have earned that title probably through more blood, sweat, and tears than we care to mention. Well, uh, I'm very grateful to be with Flight Design. Flight Design has invested a lot of uh, energy into the product. They're an engineering company. They believe in improving the product, and we believe in taking care of our customers. So there's only one way to get that in aviation, that's taking care of your customers and keep them moving. Let's talk about what's new for Flight Design in 2013. Well, we finally have CTLSIs being delivered into the U.S. now. I think we have six flying in the U.S., and uh, so far so good. They're flying great. I got to test fly and put a few hours on the one that's right behind us and the one that we're doing demo flights here at the Expo, and uh, we were impressed. They start very easily. They run very smoothly in the air, and on the ferry flights from Connecticut to Florida, we confirmed that they do, in fact, get better than 20% improved fuel economy, and that's a big thing for people these days. There's a few things that are different with the ECUs driving the fuel injection and the ignitions. There's a couple things that are different for people and there's fuel pumps and so far they really run very well and we've had no trouble with the engine whatsoever. The carbureted engines work very well. We've had historically a great safety record with them but you do have to maintain the carburetors and that takes some expertise and that gets rid of it. But the carbureted engines are simpler and they still run very nice. We went 100 percent over to the fuel injected engine. Most of our distributors change their orders over when we let them know that that was available. And our customer base, we tend to have the top of the line customers and they all want what's new and you know everyone has fuel injection in their cars and it's been a long time coming but it's very nice to have it on the engine. As I understand it right now, you guys have equipped and are taking full advantage, at least as much as is possible right now, of ADSB. Yeah, we have the uh, Dynon. SV ADSB 470 module. It's a new module that Dynon has just given to the users of Skyview. It's something you can add on as an option on our plane. It's $1,700 and you can buy the modules from Dynon for, uh, for other aircraft. But we have installed it on the plane we're doing demo flights on and so far so good it's working. We did test it and you know saw that we were getting the continental United States coverage and it didn't look terribly different but then we flew it near Embry-Riddle and they're one of the uh, launch sites for uh, the full ADSB system. And, uh, and the whole panel lit up because they always have a lot of airplanes in the air and uh, you can get the weather, you can get TFRs, uh, you can get the weather report from your airports that you're going to and uh, we think it's going to be very popular. What else is new for 2013 from the flight design standpoint? Well we're still developing the C4 and flight design has got design organization approval. It's a different system for EASA. They approve the organization and then they're just about finishing production organization approval, so that's DOA and POA, which allows the development program to move more quickly now. We were kind of disappointed. We thought the C4, we'd be having them here at Sun and Fun this year, and the program's about a year behind, but I don't think that's unusual for such a big, big thing. This is a two-pronged question. How do you see your position right now within the LSA community? And what are your thoughts on the LSA community as we get 2013 rolling, looking forward? Well, I think we will be amongst the survivors. And I think we're one of the leaders of the industry, flight design. I do think the industry will pick up again now that the economy is picking up. And I think rising tide rises all boats. And I see good things for our industry. You know, we were launched just before the downfall. And now I think the whole industry is in a good position. You know, I'm one of the board of directors of LAMA, and I'm an enthusiast. I love all these airplanes. I'd have any of them, and I'm really glad that they're all here. So I, I want to see the industry do well. Aero TV is brought to you by... No other aircraft explores the limits of the light sport category more than the Carbon Cub SS. 
It can land and take off in patches that you thought were accessible only to helicopters and hikers. And it does so with a grace, confidence, and control that are Cub hallmarks. If you thought that Life Sport was just for budget-minded beginners or for veteran pilots stymied by FAA medicals, you simply must fly a Carbon Cub SS. Check us out at www.cubcrafters.com. Are you ready for the next generation of light sport airplanes? Check out the all-new Bristel. Fun, fast, and easy to fly. Learn more at www.bristel.com. Pipistrel's innovative new Alpha Trainer has been designed from the ground up for flying school operations. Powered by a Rotax 80 horsepower engine, the Alpha burns only 2.5 U.S. gallons of fuel per hour at 100 to 108 knots, giving you the opportunity to make flight training cost-effective once again. Be sure to check out the Pipistrel Alpha when you're ready to select your next trainer. Get more info at pipistrel-usa.com. 